Hey, welcome back to Ancient Presence. Today's video is really exciting because we get to take you inside the Great Pyramid with us. This is an experience that we had always dreamed of and actually went twice in order to spend more time in its aura of mystery. As we said in our last video, there are two entrances into the Great Pyramid. One entrance is the original that was built with the pyramid and is closed to the public. The other is an entrance that was forced by the Caliph al-Mamun in the 9th century and is where tourists enter the pyramid today. As you can see in this diagram, here is the original entrance and here is the tourist entrance that was carved through the pyramid. Here is a better view of that tunnel from the Scan Pyramids project. Flinders Petrie, one of the most respected authorities on Egypt from the 1800s, believed that the Great Pyramid had a hinged door that hid its location from the outside. There is evidence of this type of door being used in Dashur, and Petrie believed that this hidden door is what caused al Mamun to force the passage. We have fun making our way up the pyramid, climbing around and testing boundaries, until we weave our way through the lines of tourists and enter the pyramid where we say goodbye to the daylight and enter the dark inner world. Walking down this rough passage, we begin to feel the excitement of witnessing something really special, as well as some questions about the official story of al Mamun's impossible tunnel that beelines directly to a junction of the pyramid. Here we are at that junction, the granite plug that lies at the base of the ascending passage. Okay, so this is the entrance that Al Mamun uh, blasted into the uh, out in or out of the pyramid. There, there's some discrepancy as to what the actual story is, but there's only one entrance before that into the Great Pyramid, which is the shaft going down into the pit. That shaft leads to what they call the, the pit, and there's a vertical shaft going up into the Grand Gallery, which is up this way. Down from the Grand Gallery, you would hit this granite plug and not be able to exit into the main shaft. As you can see here, highlighted in red, the main entrance, the descending passage, the pit, well shaft, and queen's chamber were all closed to the public when we visited. So we won't talk much about them in this video, although we may have episodes on them in the future. It would also be really great if we got to see those areas at some point in our lives. From here, we climb up through the ascending passage into the upper sections of the pyramid. This slightly claustrophobic passageway, which is beautiful and really fun to climb up into, is actually quite an awkward ascent and could be hard for some people. It's about 40 meters or 130 feet long and takes quite a bit of time to reach the top. As we emerge into the Grand Gallery, we stand in awe at this stunning architectural masterpiece. The unique notched walls and ceiling show an incredible degree of craftsmanship in the design, and the precise mathematics incorporated into this room are fascinating. There's a beautiful and otherworldly essence in here that is unlike almost anything found throughout Egypt, and it left us with a feeling of wonder. At the bottom of the gallery on the right side is the entrance to the well shaft that goes deep down into the pyramid, but it is blocked by ramps and scaffolding so you can't even see it. And just in front of the shaft is the locked gate of the passage that leads to the Queen's Chamber. We climbed down to have a look into the mysterious and eerie tunnel, and we would have loved to have gone in there to explore the mysteries in the beautiful chamber. But since it was closed to the public during our visit, we'll have to wait till next time. Making our way up the Grand Gallery, we couldn't help but feel we were in some sort of mechanism or technology that had a purpose we can only speculate on. The gallery is huge, measuring 8.6 meters or 28 feet tall, and about 46 meters or 153 feet long, and it takes quite some time to walk up it. We've read some really interesting research discussing the mathematics of the gallery, in which the researcher speculates that the design demonstrates extraordinary precision and highly accurate geodetic knowledge of the Earth. And whether or not that's true, the architecture truly amazed us, and the ancients sure knew how to build. 
But no matter how special this place is, it is still covered in modern day graffiti almost everywhere. The climate in here is hot and stuffy due to many tourists visiting every day. And after the long and sweaty climb, we reach the highest point that we can go inside the pyramid, the top of the Grand Gallery. Reaching the top of the Grand Gallery, we arrived at what is known as the Great Step. An interesting thing that we noticed while making this video is that the step was completely remade since this old photo of it. As you can see here, it is very different looking and no longer worn down. We are not sure when it was remodeled, but we are curious as to why it was worn down in the first place. Looking back, we get a great view of the Grand Gallery and spent a moment just taking it all in. Then, continuing from there, we ducked into the threshold of the antechamber, where the stone suddenly turned from limestone to granite. We immediately stand after entering and find what some people refer to as the boss. It is interesting because it almost resembles the nubs that we saw on the casing stones of Ankare, but is completely out of place since it's the only nub amidst unanimously flat walls throughout the pyramid. Also in this part of the chamber is a passage that Captain Caviglia forced in the early 1800s that connects to the northern air shaft. Ancient Architects has a video on this that we'll link in the description. Ducking into the next part of the antechamber, we got a good view of the really cool stonework up above us, exhibiting interesting grooves that seemed to suggest a purpose that was unlike any other stonework we saw in the Great Pyramid. After ducking into the final little passage of the antechamber, we entered what is known as the King's Chamber. This is possibly one of the most enigmatic temple spaces humans have ever created, and there are countless studies and theories about its dimensions and purpose. Although the chambers in this pyramid are called the King's and Queen's Chambers, there were no bodies ever found in the pyramids at Giza, and there is little evidence to support the idea that this pyramid was built as a tomb. This pyramid is only attributed to Khufu because of a small controversial inscription that was found in the chambers above the king's chamber. Ancient Architects also has a video on this that we'll link in the description. One of the first things that you notice about this chamber is that the resonance in there is powerful. This is evident in the vocal toning that we did in there that is now playing in the background of this video. Check out the video we released of us singing in there if you want to get an uninterrupted feel for the acoustic magic. One of the only things remaining in this chamber is what's known as the coffer. This mysterious box is worn and heavily damaged, having a huge chunk missing out of its southeastern side. This coffer, and all the granite in this pyramid, is beautiful red granite which comes from Aswan, more than 500 miles away. We really took our time walking around, looking at all of the minute details and markings on its surface. We noticed some pretty interesting things about it, observing what many people think are machine cutting marks. You can see here the parallel cut lines, and here there is evidence of a mistake that was made in the cutting, where the saw cut was run too deep twice over and backed out again. Christopher Dunn, whose book is also linked in the description below, speculates from a modern engineer's perspective that these saw marks could have only been made from high-speed machine cutting tools and could not have been made by hand saws. This topic is highly controversial and Egyptologists will strongly disagree with these ideas, but it turns out that Flinders Petrie noticed the same cut marks during his visits in the 1800s and concluded that the ancient Egyptians must have had more complex tools than just copper saws 
but instead saws with jeweled points of stones like sapphire or diamond to be able to cut into such a hard stone like granite with such velocity and precision as to create the marks seen here and on many other stones around Egypt. Petri illustrated these cut marks in his book linked in the description below. And in this image, the figure outlined in red illustrates the cut marks on this coffer. Interestingly, the granite coffer is larger than the doorway into this chamber, meaning that the box was placed in here before the chamber was built around it during the original construction of the pyramid. Although it looks nice and glorious in this footage, visiting the inside of the pyramids can actually be a bit challenging and not very romantic due to the security guards constantly hassling you to not make meditation and no taking photos. <laughs> and also the consistent flow of groups of tourists coming in and out, it's sort of difficult to drop into the vibe of the pyramid and really feel the wisdom that's encoded there. But luckily we stayed inside long enough to find some pristine quiet moments when we were entirely by ourselves, and these are precious memories. Looking at a 19th century floor plan of this chamber shows how there was a hole in the northwest part of the floor. It also shows that the walls extended five inches below the floor. This hole has since been filled in with stones, but you can still see the rough patching between them. Ancient Architects has a video on this linked in the description. Some other interesting features about the King's Chamber are two mysterious shafts in the walls that people refer to as air shafts or star shafts although the purpose is unknown. One of the shafts is covered by a modern fan installation, and the wall is rather damaged around it. The design of the shafts are interesting because a simpler method of construction could have been used. For instance, following a horizontal path along the course of masonry to the outside, rather than the much more difficult diagonal design that the shafts have. This probably would have resulted in greater airflow as well. This has led people to speculate that the air shafts had a religious purpose or some other significance that is now obscure to us. In his book, Petrie states that there is a good deal of crystallized salt on the inside of the coffer. The Egyptologist Zahi Hawass confirms this in his update in the book, that modern restoration removes salts and soot from the Queen's Chamber as well as the Grand Gallery. What were these salts? There are theories that speculate that they are from a giant flood of water. Some say that the stones naturally excrete them. Others say that they were from monoatomic gold. Whatever they are from, Zahi Was made sure that they were erased from the public memory. This pyramid still holds many mysteries. One of the newest discoveries that shows just how much we don't know about the structure was conducted by the Scan Pyramids Project. The project found two previously undiscovered cavities in the pyramid using muons radiography and infrared thermography. The largest, being as much as 40 meters long, is above the Grand Gallery and is either horizontal or parallel to the Grand Gallery in orientation. The other cavity, is located behind the vaulted stones of the main entrance to the pyramid, being anywhere from 17 to 23 meters above the ground. These two cavities are exciting discoveries that show us that we still have a lot to learn about this magnificent work of art. Getting to these remote chambers is another mission that will take years of careful planning. Leaving the King's Chamber, we head back out the way we came into the Grand Gallery and begin the long descent out of the Pyramid. Being inside one of the greatest structures ever built touched our hearts and left us feeling changed in remarkable ways. If you ever get a chance to go inside the Pyramids, you'll know what we mean. Reaching the entrance tunnel at the bottom, we left the mystical inner realm of the Pyramid and stepped back out into the light of day. We hope you enjoyed the tour inside of the Great Pyramid. Please like, subscribe, share our channel with your friends, and check the description below for links to more videos and great research. In our next video, we'll take you on a journey inside the Pyramid of Khafre. 
Thank you for watching and joining us in this ancient presence.